Hello everybody, here we are today talking about 8 NHL players that could have bounce back seasons this upcoming year. So before we get started with it, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or hockey, whatever the case may be. That being said, let's get on into it. So the video is pretty self-explanatory here as we're going to be getting into players that might have had a down year last season that could have a resurgence. And the first player we're going to be kicking it off with is Trevor Zegras. Now Zegras is a player we've mentioned before in videos this past season as he was a guy that had back-to-back 60-plus -back point seasons. And then he ended up just having 15 points and 31 games played this year. And there were a few things that stuck out here. The fact that he ended up not picking up a single power play assist despite playing over 75 minutes of action on the power play. One of those things that were just a little bit odd for a player that was on a video game cover. But I do got to go out there and defend him a little bit. He had been dealing with a lot of injuries through the course of the season. Was out of the lineup I think on five separate occasions. And missed some big stretches like six weeks or more on two different occasions. And is poised to possibly have a great bounce back year. And it seems a bit controversial, even though it seems odd that it is controversial with Zegras being a player that could get you 60 points that he is going to possibly rebound. But people seem to think that he's just done, his time in the league is over. But he had a relatively slow start to the year, 23 games played, he had 7 points again in and out of the lineup and then his final eight games of the year he actually had eight points with a new look duck squad that is young and trying to be better all around take less penalties score more goals and just be more competitive i see zegras being one of those players that could be a catalyst for them taking a step back forward it's a couple years ago they were decent about halfway through the year before they fell apart and since then they've really been great but yeah, Zegris feels like one of those players that is a little bit underrated. If he has a bad year this year and then has really poor defensive play, yeah, maybe you can start to be a little bit worried about what his long-term future is with the team. But we know the flash, we know the potential, we know he's already had multiple seasons that were able to produce points-wise. So give me a bounce back year for Big Z. And then for another bounce back candidate, this one feels a little odd and I feel like some people might not consider him a bounce back, but maybe somebody that could have a career year this year. And that is Chicago Blackhawks player Tavo Teravainen. Now Teravainen seems a little bit odd as well because of the fact that he's got four seasons already with 60 points or more, five seasons with 50 points or more. This year he came off of a 50 point year, but I think that he is somebody that is flying under the radar truly and honestly. He has a lot of the narrative going in his favor as he is a veteran player that started out his career with Chicago, ended up winning a Stanley Cup with them before spinning the better part of nearly a decade with the Carolina Hurricanes. I don't know if it was actually right up there on a decade, but it was a minute in recent years though, you had seen his role with the team get reduced a little bit, but this year going back to Chicago, a team that is still probably going to be rebuilding, that he's getting more veterans that might not see the opportunities they would elsewhere. He is going to be playing top six role for them. He could be getting a lot of time with somebody like Connor Bedard and just has that hometown hero feel, if you will, a champion returning for a team that has a little bit of hope going into the year. Last year, it was the Bedard show. This year, it's the Bedard show, but also seeing how other players do, how the new arrivees do, and for Tara Vinen, I don't want to say that he's going to go out there and have 80 points or anything too crazy, but I do think there's a chance that you could see him perform very, very well this year, which is why he's on this list. Now, is that going to translate entirely? It's up for you to decide. Now we have our first goalie on the list, as it's going to be Colorado Avalanche goalie Alexander Georgiev. Georgiev didn't have a great year. He ended up posting a sub-900 save percentage, had a goals against average that was above three and was a player that at points in the playoffs, there was talk about him getting pulled, but he had a relatively decent run once he got settled in during the postseason, and is on a team that while they might not necessarily be studs defensively, we've talked about that again over and over and over, they're going to score a lot of goals, he's going to get a lot of opportunities to start, and I do believe that he is in the final year of his contract, so for a guy that ended up not working out in New York, Shesterkin's worked out pretty well for the Rangers, I'd say so myself, but being in a team like Colorado where they are looking to have somebody step up, this would be a great opportunity for himself, knowing he could make himself look really good come time of free agency, and maybe even get to re-sign with the Avs and be on a team that is still looking to be good and competitive. I don't know if he will be a top 10 goalie in the league this year, but I do think with him scoring a lot of goals, he should be able to rack up a lot of wins. And the post-respectable numbers, he's going to be A-OK. -okay. He's still pretty young and is in a spot right now where the Avs are going to say, look, see what you can do. Let's see what we can do as a team and go all in. Now we get to talk about our first defenseman, and that is going to be Matt Dumba of the Dallas Stars. Now, Dumba is not in a great position in his career. He should be hitting his prime, and it looks like he's coming off of the worst season of his career. And 
is a player that's getting traded at deadline to see if maybe he can help out some teams but now he's with Dallas and I do think this has the potential to be a good signing for them mainly because for Dumba he is going to find his place on a team that is deep and could protect him and not have to put him in a matchup where he has to play high quality competition is he going to go out there and get a lot of time on the power play maybe not but he is right there where he's going to consistent minutes and be in a position to win and maybe look like a bounce back candidate he hasn't cracked the 30 point mark since the 2017-18 season i do believe when i went back and did my notes he's coming off of a 14 point year feels like a prime candidate to be able to jump back on with this Dallas side and maybe reclaim his spot in the NHL a little bit as a guy that isn't going to go out and live up the potential of his career year but is somebody that you could say is going to have a longer stint in the NHL than what you saw if he goes out and has another 14 point year this year or a 14 point season if you will I do think that his spot in the NHL is going to be up in the air but for him in Dallas I think this has the potential to go really well but I also think if this backfires, it could look really bad on me. But maybe, just maybe, Dumba cracks a 30-point mark and is able to help the Dallas Stars win a championship, even if it's not as a top-pairing defenseman. Now we shift over to the Los Angeles Kings, and we have Darcy Kemper. A goalie that not too long ago had 37 wins in a season, but he's coming off of the worst season of his career, arguably. Now, he ends up going from the Washington Capitals, a team that was barely able to scrape into the playoffs, and go to the Los Angeles Kings. Now, Washington will look better probably this season compared to last year. We've already talked about them probably in two or three videos at this point in the offseason. But LA was a team that was able to be one of the best sides in the league at 5-on-5 five five play, which is big for a veteran goalie like Kemper. He is also on a team in LA that has been able to have a lot of veteran goalie success in recent years. And he could probably have a good, good year where he's able to help the Kings make the playoffs and is not too far off of win number 200 for the career. I think he's 22 off of that at the moment. I'm going to go out there off the limb at the moment and say, yes, he gets 200 wins by the end of the season. Again, could this be something that looks bad by the end of the year? Maybe, but this is the kind of the fun point of making these videos, talking about players that aren't a lot to go out there and win hardware, but are players that are fighting for their spot in the league and trying to reclaim their status as being a good player. Maybe not even that case, too. Some people have good years and bad years, but when you're at this age where you're a goalie, your days are a little bit numbered. So we'll see what happens here with Darcy Kemper. Fingers crossed, though, for a good season for him. Now we go back to the defenseman, and that is going to be Jamie Drysdale of the Philadelphia Flyers. This feels very, very risky, but it is a risk versus reward type video. And Jamie ended up having just five points in 24 games played with the Flyers. Did not look good. Had some of the worst defensive numbers for the Blue Liners when he was in Philly and just had three points in his final 22 games with the team. However, there's going to be some things that I'm going to defend him with here a little bit. The fact that he ended up missing most of the 2022-23 season with an injury. The fact that he was battling through an injury this season. I know a lot of guys will, but he actually ended up having to have off-season shoulder surgery, I do believe. And you have to look at the fact that the Flyers were in a state of free fall by the time he ended up showing up, if I'm not mistaken. Philly was a playoff walk, and then were able to find a way to make things not happen, if you will. And while Drysdale has not really been able to be consistently in the lineup over the past couple of years, and Philadelphia is in a very weird spot as a team, I do feel like there should be a much better year for him in store if he's healthy and able to get an offseason with the group and try to figure out exactly what his role with this group is going to be. Five points in 24 games is not going to cut it if he's at that pace by the end of the year. Then you can say, oh my gosh, we've got an injury prone player that is having multiple bad years in a row. Defendable. But for now, we are looking on the positive mindset. And now we get to shuffle on over to Vegas where we get to talk about Victor Olofsson. This one has the potential to age like spoiled milk like the Dumba pick because of the fact that Olofsson is coming off of a terrible year. Seven goals and he got about 11 and a half minutes per night on average. But I do want to look at what he's done before. He's a three-time 20-plus goal scorer. Actually, he was coming off of a 28-goal season before he ended up dropping to seven this past year. Was able to produce on some not-so-great Buffalo teams and was able to produce in a limited role. Even in the past few years when his minutes got reduced, he was still able to be a goal scorer. And Vegas could use these cheap deals where they could potentially get a goal scorer that could help them out and get them again in the playoffs and see just guys chipping away and trying to make things happen as they've already won a championship and want to try to add another one he's also going to be playing on a Vegas team where if he gets paired up with the right players and the right opportunities which I think he could be given early on he could have a nice bounce back year in for Vegas they are hoping to have a bounce back year for themselves as well so Olofsson may not be one of those names you are honing in on a whole lot but if he got 15 goals or more this year I wouldn't be totally shocked but again too this one is a little bit risky for a player that just was able to play less than 12 minutes a night last season. 
And then for our final player, we travel over to Washington to talk about who else but Pierre-Luc Dubois. We have talked a lot about the Capitals. I gotta try to find a way to make it fresh for their season preview when we start doing these. But Pierre-Luc Dubois' name feels too big to leave off of this list, even though there's plenty of players you could pick off the Caps roster. Coming off of a down year with LA, and he's now on his fourth team in his eighth season in the league. He's not an old player, but he is a player that is expected to do quite a bit, and he's on a long-term deal with the Capitals, which is why I feel like he's partially going to be given a lot of opportunities this season, especially to make things happen. He's going to get favorable matchups. They're going to juggle the lines if they have to, to try to see what exactly works out for him to get things to work because again a young player that could be one of their better forwards in the coming years they want to try to make him happy because when he's unhappy he leaves and now they have to figure out exactly how to improve and by doing so and potentially unlocking his game they could be able to score more goals and have better depth and just be more dangerous overall as Washington is looking to be firmly inside the playoffs this year and maybe win a playoff series for the first time since 2018. Is Pierre-Luc Dubois going to be the focal point of that? I guess we're going to go out there and see, but I am hoping that he can go out there and help Washington be more competitive and help Ovi as well. Maybe be somebody that can get the goal record a little bit earlier. As growing up, I was a huge Ovi fan, still am, and want to see Washington at least be in the conversation, even if not able to make it to the playoffs. Pierre-Luc Dubois, you've got a lot of eyes on you, and you have a name that is rarely recognizable in the league. Try to make this first year good for yourself and for your team. But anyway, those are eight players that I wanted to talk about, just potentially having an ice bounce back year, or in the case of Tara Vinen, maybe having a career year. The beautiful thing about this video is in a year's time, if we go back and look at this and seven of these eight are wrong, it's okay. It's no skin off my nose or anything like that. I am just excited to talk about hockey and wanted to mention some players that, you know, again, could be in a good spot next time, this point next year. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below on some players that you think could have a breakout season this upcoming year and all that stuff down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. And you go love hockey, all right. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.